Hey guys, and welcome to another installation of the F-Stoppers post-production tutorials. I've been getting a lot of emails from people who have been having problems following along with the previous episodes because they haven't been primed on the basics of using layers and masks in Photoshop. So this time around, I thought it would be good to do a tutorial for those folks so they can get caught up and be able to follow along with future tutorials. For those of you who already have a good grasp on using Photoshop, don't worry, we'll be back to the regular tips and tricks in a week or so. Let's just start with the overall layout of the interface. I usually only work between a few palettes, the Layers palette, the History palette, and the Adjustments palette, which is available on CS4 and CS5. Those of you on CS3 and earlier will not have this palette, but will still be able to access the Adjustment layers via the regular Layers palette. Feel free to rearrange these palettes however you want. I even save their positions in my own custom workspace. To do this, go to Window, Workspace, and click on New Workspace. The most important palette you'll be using will be your Layers palette. This is the foundation for your retouching workflow. Whenever I begin a retouch, I always make a duplicate of the background layer. The easiest way to do this is to hit Command-J on your keyboard. You can also drag the background layer icon onto the new layer icon along the bottom of the layers palette. Doing this allows you to preserve the original untouched state of your file. So should anything go wrong with your retouch, you can always have an original layer you can go back to. An empty layer is simply a new layer without any information on it. It is, of course, completely transparent until you add pixels to it. You can clone, heal, and paint on an empty layer, but you can't apply any filters to an empty layer. Once you add something to the empty layer, it of course ceases to be an empty layer, and it functions like a normal layer. A neutral gray layer is a layer that is filled with a 50% neutral gray color, set to a blending mode other than normal. You may see tutorials on dodging and burning on this type of layer. To create a neutral gray layer, Simply Alt or Option click on the new layer icon along the bottom of the layers palette, or hit Command or Control Shift N on your keyboard, or click on Layer, New Layer. Within the layers palette, you can make individual layers visible and invisible. To do this, simply click on the eyeball icon to the left of each layer. Another useful shortcut in the Layers palette is called Stamp Visible. Stamp Visible basically takes all the visible layers in the Layers palette and merges them into one duplicate normal layer. The keyboard shortcut for this is Command Option Shift E. On a PC, it is Control Alt Shift E. In Photoshop, adjustments refer to performing operations such as curves, hue and saturation, vibrance, exposure, and so forth. There are two ways to make adjustments to a layer. That is either directly to the current layer or by adding an adjustment layer. If you choose to apply the adjustments directly to a duplicate layer via the image adjustments menu, you will be limited in what you can do. My preferred way is to add an adjustment layer instead, either through the adjustments palette or by clicking on the yin yang icon on the bottom of the layers palette. This does two things. First, it floats the adjustment layer on top of the current layer, and it adds a layer mask. A mask in Photoshop is simply a way to isolate an adjustment to a certain area of that image. The mask either hides or reveals the adjustment. A black mask hides the effect, a white mask reveals the effect. By default, all adjustment layers will provide a white mask. You simply use any painting type tool, such as a brush or gradient tool, in order to paint exactly where you want the effect to show. The great thing about using adjustment layers is the amount of flexibility it gives you. You can adjust its opacity, apply filters like a Gaussian blur to its mask, you can stack adjustment layers without increasing your file size, and you can always readjust the parameters, something you can't do if you apply the adjustment directly to a layer. Painting white on a white mask or black on a black mask will have no effect. Painting white on a black mask will reveal the adjustment, and painting black on a white mask will hide the adjustment. You can quickly set the foreground and background colors to black and white by hitting D on your keyboard, and you can quickly shift between black and white by hitting X. You can always invert a mask by hitting Command or Control I on your keyboard. I use the Curves dialog more than any other adjustment in Photoshop. I started out shooting film and learned to use the zone system. If you Alt or Option click on the Curves graph, it will give you a 10x10 10 10 grid instead of the default 4x4. 4 4. 
which might make it more applicable to those like myself who are familiar using the zone system for mapping out tones. Another useful feature is a snapshot. Designated by the camera icon along the bottom of the history palette, it allows you to record the current state of the file, including all layers and adjustments. This is great for when you are experimenting and want to compare several different versions of the same file you are working on. Snapshots, however, are deleted once you close the file. I hope this crash course on the basics of layers and masks was helpful to you. As always, you can find me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and keep up with my work on my blog. I will also be doing a retouching workshop aimed at developing an efficient workflow for photographers on June 25. For more info, visit preptopost.com. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next F-Stoppers post-production tutorial. <laughs>